Hi guys, Desert Race Centre here. Um, we've got a Yamaha R1 on the dyno. This is a 2021 model, um, and I'm going to talk about tuning these things as well as ECU flashing, and also a little bit about dyno tuning and stuff. So um, I hope that you find the information in here uh, um, useful, and for the customer whose bike this is, Dean, this is your bike, um, and I hope this explains what we do a little bit. Um, okay. Uh, first thing, I'll apologise if there are some parts I don't go into really fine detail. And the reason being is we actually race these things. Uh, we're not going to go into super fine detail and give away um, all our little bits of IP that we just need to keep a little bit closed in. But I'll do my best to give you a really great idea um, of what we do. Um, obviously, this is a road bike, um, and even though I'm talking about our race bikes, um, there is a, there is coloration between the two of them um, and how we tune bikes. So the first thing I'm going to start off with because the question came up the other day uh, with a good customer talking about I'm going to talk a little bit about the dyno and tuning tuning software um, on this particular model. We've used the Woolwich Racing um, software on this CCU and and, Wool and our friends at Woolwich um, who we work a lot with have done a fantastic job on the software and the maps that they've developed or, or the, um, or, yeah, the maps, if you like, that they've developed and given us access to that we can, so we can tune this bike. They really have done a fantastic job, so well done to you guys. Um, and we've got our Dynotech uh, uh, Dyno um, by Dyno Dynamics. Absolutely love this Dyno. Um, it's so good and reliable. Um, absolutely in love with it. We've used it for a, number, a lot of years, actually, and it's uh, awesome. The reason I want to bring those two things up is because questions come in and say, like, if I've got a Woolwich tune or a Woolwich map, it, you know, is, is what, what does that actually mean? So I'm gonna, the best way to probably describe it, and this might be a bit of a weird one, but if you think about uh, an artist painting a, a, a painting, um, what Woolwich and the dyno are, like, the dyno, for example, might be, uh, we might take that into consideration as, the dyno is actually um, the canvas that the um, the artist is going to paint the uh, uh, paint their artwork on. Now, obviously, if the canvas is rubbish, then it's going to be really hard for the artist to do a good job with their painting. And conversely, if it's really if really good canvas and reliable canvas, and every time you're doing your painting, you're getting the same quality canvas. Um, it makes your job a lot easier. And that's what the dyno is. Um, it's like that. It's consistent, it's reliable, we know how to use it, um, and it's fantastic from that point of view. Then if you were to say what the Woolwich software is like, like so it's software, there's software and some hardware that you can see here as well that's plugged into the motorcycle, um, is it's all of our brushes, oils, and all that sort of stuff to, to paint our picture if you like. What they do is produce great software that allows us to get into all different tables in the ECU, open up a whole bunch of maps um, that they do a lot, a lot of work on, um, tell us what those maps are. So like I said, if you like, it's like having all your, your paints and your pencils and all that, they're telling you what color that is, um, what texture that is. So they're, they're giving you a lot of information about, these are all the maps that this ECU has, or they give you, know, um, or they give you all the access to a lot of the tunable maps in the bike. But then from there, as a tuner, you're um, or tuning these things, you're kind of on your own. So I know a lot of people out there love to do a bit of their own ECU flashing and stuff, and that's great. But the way you should look at it is you're like, um, you've got some great tools or uh, paints and stuff, but you're an amateur when it comes to the painting of it. And I don't mean that in any derogatory way, it's just how it is. Um, so. You know, the dyno's like a canvas, as I said, and then the Woolwich software is like our, our paints and all that sort of stuff. And again, if the software side of it's not that good, then it's very hard to do a good job with the tune. So in this particular case, we've got awesome dyno, awesome bit of software to work with, and then it's up to us to tune it. The reason I want to bring that up is for people uh, to know that if you would have, say, a Woolwich tune through one shop, a one workshop, it could be completely different to a Woolwich tune from another shop. And that's just because it's it, there is a lot on the actual tuner themselves in terms of how they interpret everything that's there and what they come up with. So if we go back to our painting scenario, which might seem weird, is 
you can have the best canvas and the best paints and all that sort of stuff and the painting still looks rubbish and doesn't suit your lounge room if that makes sense um, so it's actually up to the, the tuner um, to interpret that uh, there are a lot of great tuners out there there are some that aren't as good either um, we'd like to think that we're okay at it um, or maybe a bit more than okay but obviously the only, uh, the only way we know that is through uh, customer feedback and what we can do on a racetrack and our own sampling of these. So I hope that just gives you a little bit of information on how that stuff goes together before we start talking about this particular bike. So with these 2020, 2021 and 2022 R1s, um, probably the biggest thing is, you know, find in stock form, the power delivery is quite abrupt, aggressive, I actually think like in power mode one, the power is just far too aggressive. Um, and you might look at that and go, well, that's a bit of fun on the straight, I open it up and wow, like it peels your eyebrows off. But in, in a sense of trying to have a controllable, rideable bike, whether it be through the twisties, a bit of sports riding, doing track days or even racing one, a really aggressive bike's actually just super hard to ride. It's much, much better to have a bike that delivers its power in a smooth, predictable, easy way. Um, so that's what we work on. So as any, anyone who's watched previous videos on dyno tuning that we do, the first process uh, we do is we tap into the ECU that you can see here, and that's tapped into our dyno and it logs. In, in this particular case, we are logging the twist grip versus the actual throttle opening. So we've got a whole bunch of formulas that we use to, cal to back calculate that. And then when we get one of these bikes on or the first one of this model, we just uh, we, we go through a process of doing some um, uh, doing some predetermined runs that we've learnt through our R and D over the years, and we go and map what this bike is doing when my hand is doing what I what it, what my hand is doing, and and we do that in strategic areas because we know on a thousand cc sports bike which throttle positions are actually quite important. So the first thing is we do is we map that. And then what we do with the great software that Woolwich has helped us with, um, or provided us with, um, is we, uh, we, we change the throttle maps, if you like, um, and we turn the power delivery into what we want. One of the biggest things that we do, and this again, this model's probably not too bad in, in, in what it does, but uh, as RPMs change on these ride-by-wire bikes, and this bike is a full ride-by-wire, there are no cables, it only has a throttle housing. Um, what uh, these ECUs do is that as the revs are rising they open the throttles a bit more for you um, or you know in this bike particularly in power mode one when you only got 40% of the twist group open it's giving you like 60% of the throttle that's huge you know um, and for, for me like these things are fast enough you don't need the bike opening the throttles faster than you are um, that's actually yeah pretty crazy so um, the first thing, like I said, so we, we, we log all that and then we put our base maps that we've developed over a long period of time to know the sort of throttle maps that we want in the bike. So this bike has four power modes, power mode one, two, three, and four. In, in standard trim, but, uh, all three, power mode one, two, and three, give you all of you give you full power at 100% throttle. The difference between the three is how they give it to you as you're rolling it on or at the smaller throttle positions. One being the most aggressive, two being the next, and then three being a bit more docile. And then power mode four um, is the softest map, and it actually restricts the 100% power as well. Probably, in my view, it's restricted too much. So you go from three modes that have full power when the throttle's open to one that's got it quite restricted. Uh, so, and as I said, you know, like they are, the way they are standard, they're a bit abrupt, and the way that they deliver the power just isn't smooth. Uh, it's smooth enough. I shouldn't say it's smooth. I don't want to brag anyone, and I love Yamaha. They do some great work, but it's a bit it, it it's a bit dis disconnected. The throttle um, is probably the best word for it. So the first thing we do is we map in um, our base maps that give you a linear throttle. Um, and what we've then done is power mode one is the most powerful, and it gives you the full bike's power. Um, power mode two still gives you a hundred percent power. Um, but it just delivers the throttle a little bit slower. Um, and that's probably the like, closest to our race map. So believe it or not, our race maps don't have the full beans of it. And that's just because the bike's got too much power. Um, even if you look at, you know, a lot of people look at peak power numbers and, oh, this bike makes this much and so on. 
it's not about that, it's how it delivers it. It really isn't. So you can have a bike that shows like 170 horsepower at the rear wheel, and we're talking, so a bike that's got 170 at the rear wheel at the crank's probably around the 195 mark. Um, but a bike that's got 170 at the rear wheel um, compared to a bike that's got 180, the 171 could feel a lot faster if the power delivery is a lot stronger and could also produce a much faster lap time if the power delivery is right. So those peak numbers really don't mean anything um, in the real world because uh, we're, we're not, and you know, those peak numbers are at the top part of the RPM at 100% throttle. It's, it's all the meat underneath that in terms of 20% throttle, 30% throttle, and all the rev range. That's way, way, way more important to both how fast the bike feels, um, how smooth it feels, and also um, a lap time you can produce or how fast you could ride in sports riding and so on because you, you're looking for predictable power. So yeah, as I said, Power Mode 2 is the one closest to our race map. Power Mode 3 still gives you um, almost 100% uh, power at 100% throttle, just delivers the throttle a little bit slower again. Um, and then Power Mode 4 is a restricted uh, mode. It does restrict full power, and it also restricts the um, power delivery on the way up to that full power. However, we don't restrict it as much as it does standard. Um, and the reason for that is we give you four maps that are different, but they're not miles apart either. Like in the standard trim, you've got, yes, you have three different maps and one and two aren't that far away, three is, um, and then four is like off the cliff, much, much slower. So it's like, well, if someone's gonna be using those three, four is useless. So we bring that four a bit closer so that they're actually usable. Um, and the good thing too is if you're a, like a rider that goes to a track like Broadford, you could use the power mode four that we, provide to get up to speed and then once you up to the speed bump it up to three if you like know what I mean um, so that works really well so we get the throttles done probably the key bit that we're not going to talk into detail about is how we get those throttles done um, these bikes can have abrupt power delivery the R&D that we've done over so many years is where we get a real finite smooth but nice power delivery um, and, and we can put that in there. So we, can, we you know, we the graphs we show are representative. They're not actually what we're doing. Um, and we do that on purpose just so that we're not giving away our IP in that um, because these are public videos, obviously. Um, so that's the, the first thing that we do is develop all that and get all the power modes right. Then the next thing is these, these things, um, we, we do the traditional fuel tuning, air fuel ratio, if you like. Um, when we talk about lean and rich, it's very, very common in road bikes that, that bikes are extremely lean in the low RPM and smaller throttle. Um, even up to as much as like 40% throttle, the bikes are quite lean. They starve them quite a bit. Um, and there's probably a number of reasons for that, so fuel saving, emissions, and so on. Um, but then when the bigger throttle positions come on, a lot of the bikes are quite rich. Uh, not so much this one, but a lot of the bikes on the market are quite rich. What we do, Again, we've tapped into everything and we modify the air fuel ratio. Now, obviously, for a road bike, we do it a little bit differently from a track bike. Um, as a rule of thumb goes, the track bike is a little bit richer just because we're using the full power all the time and that's what it's for. Whereas on the road, it would actually be too rich if you did that. Um, so, uh, when we talk about lean and rich, a lot of the cases with a standard bike, for example, how lean they are at 5,000 RPM, or let's say 4,000 RPM, is extremely lean. But that's not harmful for the engine because the RPM, it's not at a point that's gonna damage the engine or anything like that. However, if you were to run those air fuel ratio at high RPM, the engine over time will detonate because it, 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 it's way too lean. So lean and rich are different depending on the throttle position and RPM. So what we do is we tune that, um, we've got a, a process that we go through, we can probably talk about that a little bit, um, is what we do is we tune that under static, th uh, so we're, we're always doing all our tuning under load, um, by the way, um, and we tune it in a number, key, a number of key static positions that we know are important to get the final tune right. So we tune the bike in those static positions and run the bike um, at, a, at a static throttle position.
And once we've got that all close, what we then do is do a whole bunch of roll-on tuning. Um, again, it's strategic. We know the RPMs and throttle positions that we're tuning from, and that allows us to take the very close base map that we got out of the static throttle tuning and then refine it with all the roll-ons and stuff. So you're replicating real-world tuning. Um, so we do all that, and then we do um, a final test ride on the road to make sure that the bike is doing everything that we want it to do. And that's not, that whole process is not dissimilar to, well, it's not, it's exactly the same process we put into all our race bikes. Um, we, we normally offer three levels of tune. Um, we call it like a pro or a race tune is the highest level. And that's essentially giving you the, if we were to, you know, saying, you know, we're gonna race this particular model, we put the same effort in. Then we have a middle tune, our performance tune, which is close to that, but we won't spend quite as long in all the fine detail in the roll-ons and in a few areas. It's still an amazing tune, but it's just a, a little bit less refined. Um, and then we have our loading maps that are based on, you know, the maps that we've developed already in those pro tune and um, race tune type uh, tunes. And then we um, put it in, you know, we've got a map that we can put in. And because it's developed on Australian fuels and we're here in Australia, that loading map is going to be so close. Um, a lot of loading maps from different countries, you've got to be careful of them because they do use different fuel to here in Australia. So that's quite important. Um, so that's a little bit about the tuning process with these guys. Um, when they're finished, the throttle connection is unbelievably better. It's way more predictable, way smoother, um, wa much, much easier to ride, more fun to ride because you know exactly what the bike's doing. Um, they, it feels like your, your power modes do exactly that. They change the power of the engine, but the throttle will at all times feel like you've actually got cables and it's doing what you want. Some of the stuff they do these days with throttle maps and stuff, like it's, over, in my view, it's over-engineered. Um, the rider knows how to ride a motorbike and you, you know, the throttle needs to behave in the way you want it to behave because that's your job is to ride it. Um, sometimes when bikes are, um, are, are, are trying to be too clever and change all the throttles for you, it can get into such a complicated situation that it's hard to know what the bike wants to do. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I hope that's a little bit of a uh, little bit informative about how uh, how we tune these bikes. Um, yeah.